Alrighty, boyos, welcome back once again to another video. How are you guys doing, guys? Today, this entire video is about me not walking back into frame to do my intro because I'm starting to get lazy. But in all seriousness, though, today's video is about Archetype Havoc. Now, in my opinion, this guy is one of the coolest looking heroes in the game. I absolutely love the way that Archetype Havoc looks. He is just amazing. I've been very hyped for this guy ever since the initial leak that happened about two weeks ago that was showcasing that he would be in the game. I've been getting tons of comments talking about, Joey, when are you going to do a video talking about a hero loadout? And today, this is going to be my first ever video talking about a hero loadout. And we'll be doing it with Archetype Havoc. Now, if you want to get Archetype Havoc, the only way that you can get him is through the new quests that have been added uh, with this 8.0 update. If you go on over to the quest log and then go to the hero quest, you're going to be met with a ninja quest, outlander quest, constructor quest, and a soldier quest. So the soldier quest requires you to complete three missions as a soldier, not constructor, in a 52 plus zone. Now if I remember correctly, you have to complete SSD2 in Canny Valley before you end up unlocking these. After you complete your initial three missions, you're going to be met with another quest. This quest is the one that will give you Archetype Havoc, and uh, it'll it'll basically come after your initial quest, right? It's basically just going to ask you to kill 300 husks, which can easily be done in one mission. If we go on over to Manage the Heroes, and I go on over to Soldiers, uh, the first initial hero that you do get is Light Show Spitfire. Not really a fan, especially of how this character looks, and I'm not really a fan of his magazine increase either. I might do a video on him, though, uh, but I'm not really a fan of him, so I did decide that I would do Archetype Havoc, and he is the one that you unlock for the second quest. Now, if we take a look at Havoc, he has the Shockwave ability, the Lefty and Righty ability, and the Frag Grenade ability. And every single hero in the game now has an exclusive little uh, flare, I guess you could say, attached to their name. This one says Engineered for Combat Performance. So actually, I think that's a little bit of lore. This guy is probably a cyborg robot android thing, which is kind of cool. I always kind of thought that was a helmet or something, but... I, I don't know that may, maybe a little bit of lore. I'm not sure. Anyways, so these are his abilities: shockwave, lifty, righty, frag grenade. If you go on over to the perks, his standard perk is the escape artist perk. Using shockwave increases movement speed by 40% for eight seconds. Now the standard perk is always going to be your support perk. The commander perk is always going to be your actual perk for the character. So if it's a commander perk, it's basically the perk you have while you're playing it. It says replaces the standard perk if this hero is slotted as the commander. So keep that in mind. And if he is your commander, like we're doing for the uh, for today's video, he gets an increase to movement speed by 40% and he gets an increase to armor by 145 for nine seconds. Uh, I really, really, really like this commander perk a lot. Now, what I have seen is a lot of people implement Archetype Havoc as a really good standard perk. You can use this guy on the, um, the Renegade character, the Shock Trooper Renegade character, um, and you can use this as well on him. And it's very, very, very useful useful but today of course we're using him as the uh, as the commander and because of that we also have the class perks which is suppressive fire and stay frosty if you guys don't know these are basically the new soldier uh class perks and they come with every single soldier consecutive shots against the same target deal an additional three percent damage for up to five stacks very similar to debilitating shots and stay frosty after three eliminations it increases your ranged weapon damage by 10 percent and weapon stability by 35 percent for seven seconds and every single kill you get will refresh that duration if you guys have ever played a soldier and you see the little red outline on the end of your barrel that is the stay frosty buff i thought i would point that out just for this video seeing as it's my first soldier and because these perks are also new now let's go ahead and jump in to the actual build for this character so there's two different builds that you can do you can do this build which is an assault rifle damage build or you can do this build, which is a, um, a more ability-based build. Now, one thing I want to say is that the gameplay that I'm going to show later on today is going, well, not later on today, but in the video, is going to be this specific build. So we'll get to this one last. First, let's take a look at this build right here. Now, this build, I personally would consider the better build for this character, uh, but it really comes down to play style. Whenever you're talking about a best build for a character, it always comes down to play style. So what I find is the best, my 
might not be the best for you. It's kind of the same with weapons. So we take a look, we have Archetype Havoc, and the team perk is going to be Keep Out. Keep in mind, this guy has Shockwave, Lethean Righty, and Frag Grenade. We also have four perks in a row that are going to assist his uh, weapon damage. So because of this team perk, we have at least one buff to his Frag Grenades, because this is a five times the buff because of the uh, team perk. For every soldier you have, it makes your grenades even better. So seeing as he does have a buff to his grenades, I went ahead and added this one right here, which is the Love Ranger perk, which is the Power Impact, which increases your Shockwave radius by 37.5%. I've done some testing with this hero, and I just cannot get behind Lefty and Righty. I try to put as many Lefty and Righty buffs as I can, and Lefty and Righty is still weak on pretty much any character that isn't Raven and isn't Carbide. So I really try to stay away from Lefty and Righty. So for this specific build, I went with a buff for the grenade and for the Shockwave. Now for my Assault Rifle, damage I went with this guy right here uh, Bulletstorm Jonesy every shot increases ranged weapon damage by 1% for a maximum of 25 stacks now you can also switch this perk out right here for crack shots perk but there's a difference between these two so whenever you have crack shots perk he basically does the exact same thing except it stacks up to 50 but you also lose accuracy with every single shot now it's kind of down to personal preference here so for the most part I've been using the pain train a lot my specific Specific pain train only has 30 bullets in the magazine so I decided that I would go ahead and go with the 25 stacks because I'm only missing out on five for the increased damage however if you are using something like the gravedigger crack shot is really 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 good even though you have that little bit of a loss of weapon stability the gravedigger has a magazine of up to 70 and this can be a very 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 good support bonus so whenever it comes down to deciding between bullet storm uh, Jonesy and uh, deciding between crack shot normally Normally, you're probably going to want to go with crack shot, but it's really kind of down to personal preference. You're going to get more damage at the end of the day with crack shot, however. Then we have locked and reloaded. This comes with, uh, I believe it comes with uh, Skull Trooper Jonesy as well as Skull Ranger Ramirez. And we have Skull Ranger Ramirez right here. After reloading, it increases your weapon damage by 15% for 5 seconds. A very good one right there. Then we have the assault damage with Havoc. And then we have the assault crit damage with uh, Sledgehammer for 75%. And then, of course, we have the stones jonesy uh 37.5 percent increased uh shockwave radius now that is pretty much my build for the for the weapon damage side of havoc you know this is kind of a basic build that you can put on really any hero that you want to that's why i did two builds i wanted this one right here to be more uh specified towards his skill set you know what I mean? So let's go ahead and jump into this. And this, of course, is going to be the gameplay you see at the end of the video where I kind of like wrap up my general thoughts on the character. So for this guy right here, for this loadout, we kept the keep out because we have the five times soldiers down here. So this is going to be an excellent grenade buff. Now, I went with this man's right here. He did get his name changed, I believe. Uh, nope, still Shock Trooper Renegade. Okay, so I went with Shock Trooper Renegade right here. Now, his Doppler effect says it decreases the shockwave energy cost by 24 percent and it also says the exact same thing here both of these are the exact same thing whenever it comes to decreasing energy cost but this is not true even if you look at the picture it actually shows a timer next to the shockwave what this really does is it reduces the time between your shockwaves by 24 percent so i went with the doppler effect i went with explosive optimization to allow me to uh, have less energy cost for the shockwaves as well so then i can use bigger is better and this grenade damage perk to my full utilization to be able to get even more grenade damage bigger is better is more of a radius on top of the keep out the grenade damage is going to allow the ticks to do even more damage as well as the initial impact and then we also have power impact which increases your shockwave radius again by 37.5 percent so this entire build is completely focused on your shockwave and focused on your frag grenade as lefty and righty is a very weak ability in my opinion and i just chose not to even focus it whatsoever so i really really like this build this is the build that you guys are going to be seeing in the gameplay so let's go ahead and jump on over to the gameplay and let's take a look and give my general thoughts on archetype uh, havoc as a whole Alrighty, righty so what are my general thoughts of archetype havoc now i'm a very big fan of archetype havoc as you guys know especially in terms of the way that his cosmetics are he's also a very easily obtainable hero as you really only have to play four missions in total to unlock him he looks excellent he's easy to unlock but how exactly does he play whenever you have 
the certain uh, loadout that you want to go with. Now, like I said, the gameplay you guys are seeing in the background right now is the gameplay of his ability loadout that I went with. His grenades are really good. His shockwave is also very good. And he really, the only weapon damage buff that he gets is from being a soldier. So how exactly does Archetype Havoc really stand up against other heroes? Well, the thing with Archetype Havoc is even though he's really fun and he looks really cool and he's just all around a very good soldier, he's not one that excels more than any other soldier in my opinion. His main, uh, I guess, niche you could say is the fact that his shockwave is going to allow him to run really fast and his shockwave is also going to allow him to get really buffed up. Now, this shockwave, the really good thing about this is that you don't necessarily need to hit an enemy with your shockwave for it to be able to be effective. All you have to do is shockwave the ground once and for the next nine seconds you are going to have a buff to your movement speed and you're also going to have a buff to your overall health which is really good. I like the fact that you don't have to hit a husk so you could really use this build in a sense of a speed build. You know your shockwave cooldown really isn't too too long although I wish it would go down a little bit more um, but you know that's just kind of a little bit of a trade-off if you decide to use the shockwave as a way of movement you know uh, whenever you're using this and you're in the heat of battle it's very good because you also get that increased armor and you also have a way to get out of the combat really quickly which I think is a really cool thing but it's kind of a situational type of ability mainly where archetype havoc is going to excel is being a support hero now me personally I'm not really going to use archetype havoc as a support hero uh, at least for a little while because I greatly enjoy using him because of the way that he looks but if you're trying to get the most out of this hero you Use him as a support hero. The hero that we were talking about earlier, which is Shock Trooper Renegade, has a increased or a, a, a very really good cooldown uh, ability for his shockwave, right? He's the person that we have in our support team. He gives us less uh, cooldown, allows it to go down faster or whatever. Well, whenever you have him as your commander, when you use Shock Trooper Renegade as your commander, your shockwave is going to go down extremely fast. And even though you're not going to be able to get as good as a buff whenever you're using Archetype as a support, I would definitely advise using Archetype more as a support to get that movement speed buff than I would as using him as an actual character. Now the armor buff is really 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 good as a commander but I have to say that it's probably not the best that you could go with. If you're going for the probable best shockwave hero shock trooper renegade is probably where you want to be and using havoc as your support bonus for that character is probably the best way you are going to get uh, your use out of arc trooper or arc archetype I'm sorry havoc. Um, but yeah that's kind of all I really have to say for this hero you know you can use him if you like him cosmetically like I'm going to do um, because at the end of the day with the hero rework pretty much any hero is viable and you can build them really however you want but at the end of the day if you want to get the most out of archetype havoc use him as a support bonus on shock trooper renegade but if you do like the way that he looks like me then you're really not gonna be missing out on too too much by using this character because pretty much any character can be pretty usable in the hero rework but guys that's it for me thank you guys so much for watching I hope you guys did enjoyed this video if you have anything that you would like to add on to the video in terms of your own personal build or how you would use archetype uh, havoc then let me know down in the comments down below but i really much did enjoy making this video it's definitely a lot more different than any of the other videos because of this whole hero rework so let me know if you guys want to see more down in the comments down below thank you guys so much for watching i greatly do appreciate it and like i said make sure you leave your feedback i'll be streaming on twitch later today make sure you go check that out as well but guys that's it for me thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time